So it's April 11th, uh, it's springtime. And uh, the original idea was to go for a nice springtime hike and um, being ignorant, not remembering being over a mile high that it might snow. So our hike is now snowshoeing. We are here in the Dolomites. And you're a mountain guide? Yeah. Como se dice guide? Guida. Guida de Montaña. Guida Alpina. Gui oh, That's the guide name. Alps Guida guide. Alpina. Yeah. That's Alpine, amazing. Alpine guide. And how, in Laden, how do you say let's go? Zona Marena. Zona Marena. <laughs> let's do this. It takes us a while to turn around. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> We're rolling, Rob. Wow. <laughs> Bubbles, effervescent, frizzante, fun, fizzy, and fruity. This week on Sip Trip, we're in Northern Italy to visit three of its major sparkling wine regions, Franciacorta, Trento Doc, and Valdo Bianade, home of Prosecco DOCG. While maybe not the first country that comes to mind when you think of sparkling wine, the history of Italian bubbles goes back further than you'd think. But before we head into the mountains, as with all things Italian, we must begin with an aperitivo. There's no better place to sip on a spritz than in the city of Venice. Tour guide Nico Balbino is a true Venetian, or as the locals call themselves, Venetti. This is delicious. This is my favorite way to eat. We call it grazing. <laughs> we sat down to snack on some cicchetti, which are definitely not tapas, and sip on a spritz made with the original Venetian recipe. So we have our spritz. This is Prosecco with Select. Most people in the States know Campari and Aperol. Mm -hmm. What is special about Select? Because it's just like the original one, the first version of a spritz. It's made by, with a mix of herbs. We don't know the herbs because it's a secret. And they're fermentating using sugar, you know, and this fermentation creates this sort of select. That it must be mixed with water or with wine, because if not, it's too strong, you know. The... And you put an olive in your spritz. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the combination is nice. When you drink and the bitterness of the, the olive is nice. Is there any concern that Prosecco is a, a wine for not, not just spritzes, but it's, we think of it as party, it's fun, it's facile. Do you think that diminishes the possible identity or pinnacle that you're seeking for Prosecco? No, 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 può essere utilizzato non solo come uh, spumante da solo, ma anche utilizzato insieme a, ad, altri, ad altre bevande. So it's the best of both worlds. You can have Prosecco on its own in the height of like Cartizze, and you can have it with Select in Venice with Cicchetti. Ma per fare un buon spritz ci vuole un buon Prosecco. Assolutamente. Assolutamente. <laughs> Salute. Salute. Ching, 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 ching. Grazie. We just walked into the village of Valdo Bianade, which is the, the heart of Prosecco country, one of the world's most famous wines. We've all drank lots of Prosecco in our lifetime, but to be honest, I've never been here before, and just walking here and looking at these hills, the, the dramatic nature of them has kind of blown me away. And um, I'm really excited to kind of learn more about this village, it's beautiful here. Normally, I've always said that Prosecco's fun, fizzy, and fruity, I think I may have underestimated it. After a night of spritz in Venice, I definitely needed an espresso before we began our trip through Prosecco. We talked more with Alessio Del Savio of Mianetto, one of the world's most historic producers of Prosecco, about the town and people of Valdebiana. Grazie. She knows that I need a double espresso. <laughs> uh, so we are here in a 200-year-old cafe in the village of Valdebiana Day. What is the image of Valdo Bianca today that we should have as tourists or travelers that come here? Una domanda importante. Beh, Valdo Bianca deve venire a visitare perché è la patria del prosecco, ma soprattutto perché è una zona molto particolare dove il paese stesso 
vive su quella che è la viticoltura e l'enologia. Una viticoltura e l'enologia particolare in quanto già eh, in, collina, in colline molto ripide porta una viticoltura eroica. Tenete conto che comunque essendo il territorio molto molto frazionato quasi ogni famiglia ha un ettaro di, di, di vigneto e quindi eh, tutti eh, sono dediti veramente alla viticoltura. The relationships between producers and family farmers are built on trust. In a landscape as beautiful, yet as tough as this to cultivate, trust and hard work are major parts of the tradition of Valdobbiana de viticulture. You intend to say that they are trying to take care of their work with their work, always more with their work hard in this territory, but also to try to make sure that the Prosecco is not just a wine, but also a territory, and this is fundamental. As a as a, a third generation grower and living here, raising here, was there ever a time, maybe when you were younger, where you were like, basta, no. I don't want to do this. No, no, no. no. To terra, to corre. Sì. The land is your heart. This is... Se c'è la passione, la terra e la uova prima di tutto. Grazie. Grazie mille. Grazie. Grazie. Cheers. Salute. Baby. Baby. A little further up is Cartice, Prosecco DOCG's most prestigious vineyard site. Paolo de Bartoli is an agronomist with the Colveteraz estate. His passion for the land and Prosecco stems from his fascination with the thought that back in the early 1800s, someone saw potential in the steep, rocky forests of these hilltops and planted vines. Now, nearly two centuries later, it is one of the most important regions for Prosecco. We're standing here at one of the, the most amazing wine bars I've ever been to. We just met people from Sweden. There's a bunch of Italians here. We're Americans. Do you see Prosecco as the wine of the people? Because it's fun, it's exciting, it's also easy to drink. L'internazionalization, la conoscenza, tutti quei strumenti informativi che tutte le persone possono accedere hanno creato quella che è un'informazione territoriale. Quindi noi cosa abbiamo? Abbiamo dei turisti come quelli che tu hai visto che sono svedesi o come che possono essere gli americani o come i giapponesi che per varie ragioni vogliono conoscere il territorio quindi è un enoturismo culturato che ha bisogno di conoscere e il problema è quello che noi dobbiamo far conoscere un sistema di lavoro delle aziende e come esiste il Canova a Possagno o le grandi mostre a Conegliano o tutto quello che è l'arte del Trevisano dobbiamo far capire anche cos'è l'arte del vino e dobbiamo far capire cos'è un territorio Cheers! Cin cin! There we go! There we go! We are on the top of Cartice in Valdo Bianade. I've never been here. Rebecca, have you been here? I have not been here, but I've read and I've, I've studied that this is the best area for Prosecco. I, I don't think I've ever been on a steeper hill. I feel like I say this every day that I'm here. And the hills, I mean, the vineyards are planted on every little slope and every little way, and I don't know where to look. There's a vending machine of wine up here. This is all Prosecco, probably the Nirvana of wine. They have magnums of Prosecco in here. El mio preferio cofondo. So I prefer cofondo la osta uh, from here. Let's try that. Okay. One, twenty-five. Ah! Ah! Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. This is awesome. Is yes! Grazie. I think one of the things that has always inspired me most when I travel is I come across places like this. Things that I long for, it's seeming community, places where you can just buy some sausage, some wine, some cheese, you sit outside. Now there are places like that in the United States, but they're few and far between. Whereas when I travel across Europe, South Africa, Japan, they're, they're prevalent. It's something that makes me want to travel more. Although we originally went to the Dolomites to hike, Mother Nature had other plans for us. I think we go on this meadow there. Should be a very nice uh, view on the mountains, but today... Our guide for the day, Cesare Pastore, has been a Guida Alpina, or Alps guide, for over 30 years, taking people through the peaks and valleys of this unique mountain range via snowshoe, mountain bike, and ice pit. Here, we discovered the ancient roots of an almost extinct language, Latin. Cesare and his ancestors made these mountains their home long before they spoke Italian. 
So you're Ladino, yes, or you're exactly. of, of the local ancient people here, the people that yeah. have been here forever. The people here in the valley, yeah. they all yeah. Ladini. Yes, yeah, it's the it's the language and the origin of the people is a very old reto romanic uh, language. It's come from the Romanic people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know, 20,000 years ago, maybe. <laughs> they go on with this uh, tradition and the language and all. And so it's, it's not a dialect, but it's a language. So it's time to go back. Yeah. You ready? If you, if you want to have breakfast, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zona <laughs> Marina. I don't know if anybody stuck in the kitchen last night when we were going downstairs, but they made these here last night. And I was just told, this is Fontina from Trentino, salami from Trentino, speck from Trentino, prosciutto cotto from Trentino. The eggs are grown down the hill. The butter's made here. The oranges are not grown here. <laughs> uh, they look nice. So we're drinking Trento Doc, which is the sparkling wine from Trentino, where we're at. Made in the Metodo Classico style, so it's made in the style where the secondary fermentation's in the bottle. And it's that connection. I'm in it, I'm eating it, I'm drinking it, and you know, interacting with the, the, the locals, and it's just kind of rounding the whole experience out. I think that's the, the beauty of uh, travel and wine and food and culture. Cheers, guys. Good day. This is a great post-hike hydration. After a bubbly breakfast, we came down the mountain to the medieval and historic town of Trento. This is one of the most beautiful towns I've ever been. The experience of finding yourself in villages and towns, not on the tourist routes, can lead to unexpected discoveries. Here we met up with several Trento Doc producers in a medieval fortress with frescoes from the 13th and 14th century. They gave us a deeper understanding of their land, history, people, and passions. We researched the quality for many years, and now we are real ready to, to communicate to the world um, where we are, our, our territory, and our idea of wine. We are the first uh, to produce the sparkling wine, uh, bottled fermented, in Italy. And now, made in Italy is now in all of the world. The very interesting thing, which few other regions have, all the grapes of Trento Doc are hand-picked, uh, many of our um, vineyards are too steep to, to go with tractors, so you have to do all by hand. Uh, so the common identity about Trento Doc and Trentino is that um, we are all wine artisans. This, I think, is kind of unique in such a smaller area. Find so many different growing conditions and altitude of condition. We are kind of squeezed between Alps and a Mediterranean climate. You know, we really have something unique because we are a mountain sparkling wine. And, uh, you know, as far as I know, honestly, no other denomination in sparkling is uh, putting this emphasis or has this characteristic. And being a mountain sparkling wine is something you, do, you find also in the glass. You know, I like to say that in a glass of Trento de Oc, you got a touch of sun, of Mediterranean sun, because that's the aromatic maturation we get on our grapes. But also, you know, the cold and the snow of the mountains. And this is what brings us freshness, finesse, you know, I think we also have a very secret weapon, which is that we represent also an Italian lifestyle. You know, we want to be ambassador of, uh, of Italian lifestyle and Italian art of living. I come from a small town in Texas, and I'm lucky enough to have parents that instilled in me the idea of getting out to see the world. Time and time again, taking the road less traveled has proved more exciting than knowing where to go. There is a difference between a tourist and a traveler you have to decide because being a tourist is going where other people tell you to go. Being a traveler is going to discover something. And here, I think, we all think there is much to discover. There are a lot of places where if you make the, the, the wrong turn, uh, you, you find something that you never expected to, to see. Trento Doc is one of the most stunning and breathtaking parts of the world. The dramatic nature of the area leads it to being a world-class wine-growing region. The wines are born of the Alps, and the struggle of farming creates wines that have tension, depth, and beauty, but most importantly, deliciousness. Robert Anessi, owner and sommelier of El Paiol, was the first person from Trento to win Italy's coveted Best Sommelier Award in 2017. He met us on one of the ancient terrace hillsides to give us his take on this amazing place. You were just named the Best Sommelier of Italy. Congratulations. Grazie mille. What is that like being from Trento and representing 
your region? Uh, of course, it's a great pride uh, because uh, no one in Trentino won this competition before, but uh, it's also a big responsibility because I have to, uh, to, to bring uh, out of my region the name of the wines from this region. So the sparkling wine, the Trento Doc, uh, and the white wine production, the red wine production. So it's a big you know, responsibility. You were talking about these vines and growing on this intense volcanic soil that you call porf porphyric? Porphyric soils. The vines, they struggle and it's hard. This is the mountains. Do you feel that there's a connection between the people having to struggle, the wines having to struggle, and do you feel that's kind of pervasive in the, in the culture itself here? Yes, it's very difficult to work in this vineyard. For the vines first, because they have to find the nutrients very, very, very steep. Life in the mountains is not that easy. Living in the mountain, you need to have, okay, big lungs and, you know, strong legs. And even the temperature, because we can also feel that today it's, it's cold. This also is reflected into the sparkling wine production, because you can feel this nice, crispy uh, acidity and these uh, fantastic aromas in the Trento Dog grapes. Just an hour's drive from Milano, you'll find another region of Italy that takes its sparkling wine production very seriously, Franciacorta. Although the first official bottling of sparkling wine from Franciacorta was in 1961, according to Maurizio Zanella of Caldabasco, the history of sparkling wine in this region goes back a little bit further than that. But historically, Franciacorta is older than our cousin from France because Girolamo Conforti wrote in 1570 a book where he was explaining that he was doing a vino mordace, a vino that beat, that have a lot of acidity, but it cannot keep this wine with the bubble because all the bottle was exploding. And in France, unfortunately, or lucky for us that we are <laughs> drinking, they was more strong and, and they go for a great wine. Calabasco takes their vineyards so seriously they had a model made of the entire region of French Accorta. This model gives us an overview and shows us how Lago Iseo and the mountains create a perfect little nook for making sparkling wine. Models are cool and all, but I gotta tell you, there's no substitute for a helicopter tour of one of Italy's most incredible landscapes. Maurizio Zanella is an iconic figure in the world of wine. He did not invent Franciacorta, but he has been one of its biggest evangelists. His passion is infectious, but his knowledge of the region, farming, and winemaking are without parallel. The greatness of the region derives from its proximity to the beautiful Lago Iseo and the mountains, but almost as importantly, its proximity to a world-class city. We drove the hour to Milan and sat down to dinner with Maurizio and talked more about the connection between such a seemingly remote farm town and one of the most fashion-forward cities on earth. So in, in speaking of the past and, and your establishing your, your estate, what is the link today between Lombardia, Milan, and Franciacorta, and what do you see as its future? It's proximity, but it's also the style of life, the style of eating and drinking the wine of the city. I believe it was very important for Champagne to have Paris behind because it became with the Lido, with the Moulin Rouge, with the, the nightlife. Champagne has became popular also thanks to Paris, I believe. And the French Accorta is becoming popular uh, in Italy thanks to Milan. And we need to have a kind of testimonial like this in order that the name came out. All the best hotel, all the best uh, uh, restaurant, all the best bar, now they are serving Franciacorta more than other appellation, Italian and foreigner. Really? Yes. And they are proud to do it. Cheers. Salute. The world of wine with bubbles at first may seem like a party or a celebration, and it is. But having traveled through Trento Doc, Valdo Bianade, and Franciacorta, we discovered it's so much more. The wines are the place, the, best, the people, the culture, the and the best. history. They give us a deeper understanding of culture and why people are who they are. The choice to make that wrong turn, to be an explorer, opens up the world in unexpected ways. 
The simple act of opening a bottle of sparkling wine creates the possibility of turning strangers into Salute. friends. <laughs> You have to put in a card to show your age. Oh, grazie. So he's giving this to me because I don't have an identification card. Moment. No problem. No problem. Grazie. Ah. Uno. Uno. Due. Due. Cinque. Oh, questa è questa. Avete una testa sanitaria? No, I want my money. No, no. Grazie. Oh, he's the owner. Oh, uh, that's that's the Though that took us a while, we needed the owner to get it. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>